Right now, the spring primary gets off to a tense start in the village of Brooklyn after a public safety threat in the area. We're live at the scene with the latest. Also, tensions between the U.S. and Russia continue to grow as the war in Ukraine approaches one year. This is News 3 Now at noon. Good afternoon, I'm Mark Kane. Thanks for joining us. We, we begin with a major winter storm headed our way tonight and tomorrow, where we could see heavy snow and ice throughout the next few days. Let's head out to the weather patio. Meteorologist Kelly Slifka has a look at your first warm forecast. Hi, Kelly. Yeah, good afternoon, Mark. It is actually still fairly quiet, so if you want to make some preparations for this incoming storm, try to get out and do this uh, before this evening because we'll already start to see some snow spreading in. That'll be mainly affecting areas from Madison areas to the north, but starting tomorrow, we're looking at a winter storm watch for all of southern Wisconsin. Winter storm warnings up to the north out of our area, but those already are effective uh, tonight and tomorrow. Uh, right now, you can you start to see some of these clouds that are streaming in. This is a fast-moving clipper that's moving across the Dakotas, moving through Minnesota, eventually reaching western Wisconsin as we get later this afternoon. Now, it is a colder day, but we've pretty much uh, seen the coldest temperatures this morning. We're going to continue to rise into the upper 20s and low 30s today, but we do have that alert day starting tonight, continuing through tomorrow right into Thursday. So this is a long-duration event. We're looking at snow tonight, changing to some mix and some ice developing late tonight to, uh, through tomorrow morning and that will continue right through tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow night even into Thursday morning before wrapping up as a little bit of snow before it starts to uh, taper off a wide range of uh, activity expected with ice mainly to the south with some heavy snow up to the north of Madison going to see uh, both of those a little bit of both uh, going into uh, later tomorrow uh, looking at our future track the clouds will continue to thicken up throughout the day some slight snow starting to spread in from the northwest that may be affecting the evening commute say after five six o'clock a little bit of light snow, maybe an inch here in the Madison area, more significant snows up to the north. So uh, planning on your day, looking at temperatures in the 20s this morning or in the early afternoon, uh, rising up into the lower 30s and that wind will be a lot lighter. But we'll talk more about this winter storm and the ice potential and the heavy snow potential. More on that coming up. A lot going on. Absolutely. All right, Kyle, we'll see you in a bit. Thank you. It is Election Day once again in Wisconsin as voters head to the polls for the spring primary. But in the village of Brooklyn, their polling location had a change due to a public safety threat that ended with a man getting arrested. News 3 now. Catherine Merck is live at the scene. Catherine, what can you tell us? Well, Mark, the new polling location here in Brooklyn is now up and running. I spoke to a couple of voters who said it was really easy for them to get in and out and cast their ballot. But that comes after a disruption just down the road earlier this morning. Take a look at what we saw. A polling location was closed on North Rutland Avenue due to a threat in the area. Dozens of police cars were outside of the community building where people were planning to go vote. A deputy in the area told us the threat came from a dispute with neighbors over a tree. That threat wasn't due to the polling place, but ultimately officials at this site told me the safest thing for voters was to move to this spot on Windy Lane. And I felt with the presence of the police and the difficulty getting to the polling place, because then there was only one entrance to get to the polling place, I felt it was better to move the location for the day to give the voters a, you know, feeling of safety for coming to vote. We do know one 75-year-old man was arrested in Oregon in relation to this incident. And like I said earlier, this situation is now clear. The polling place is able to be visited by voters coming in today. And the election officials that we spoke with said it should be good for the rest of the day for people to come in and cast their ballot. Reporting right. live from Brooklyn, I'm Catherine Merck with News 3 Now. All right, Catherine, thank you. Meanwhile, voters here could decide the balance of the state Supreme Court today. The election is technically nonpartisan, but interest groups and party operations have pumped millions of dollars into the high race stake. The outcome could tip the currently conservative leaning court the other way. The candidates are Janet Prolisse, which Everett Mitchell, Jennifer Doro, and Dan Kelly. The top two move on to the April ballot. Madison voters will narrow the choices for mayor down to two. Incumbent Satya Rose Conway is on the ballot today trying for a second term. She's going up against Gloria Reyes, a former president of the Madison School Board, and Scott Kerr, a longtime city employee. You can find everything you need to know about today's election on channel3000.com. Look for our campaign 2023 section on the homepage. 
just below the Plan My Day forecast. We've compiled all the races we're following, as well as everything you need to know to make your choice at the polls, including all the interviews we've done with Madison's mayoral candidates leading up to Election Day. Well, President Biden is meeting with Poland's president on a mission to firm up support for Ukraine. The visit comes as Russia increases tensions with the West by suspending its participation in a nuclear arms control pact with the United States. Skylar Henry reports. President Biden met with the president of Poland amid much fanfare Tuesday, where he reaffirmed the United States' commitment to its European allies. Our support for Ukraine will not waver. NATO will not be divided, and we will not tire. The president arrived in Warsaw after an unannounced visit to Ukraine Monday that was meant to show solidarity with the war-torn nation and send a defiant message to Russia nearly one year since the invasion began. I just come from a visit to Kyiv, and I can report Kyiv stands strong. But Russian President Vladimir Putin sent a defiant message of his own in his State of the Nation address. Putin said his nation would not be defeated in battle and announced that Russia will suspend its participation in the new START Treaty, which limits each country to no more than 1,550 deployed nuclear warheads and 700 deployed missiles and bombers. The agreement includes on-site inspections to verify compliance. By suspending the last remaining nuclear arms control pact with the United States, Russia has significantly ramped up tensions with the West. Biden administration officials were quick to condemn the action. The announcement by uh, Russia that it's uh, suspending participation in New START is deeply unfortunate and irresponsible. Uh, we'll be watching carefully to see what uh, Russia actually does. The head of the United Nations also spoke out against Putin's announcement and encouraged Russia to reconsider. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. Originally signed in 2010, the New START Treaty was set to expire two years ago, but just days before its expiration, the two sides agreed to extend it for another five years. Tributes continue to pour in for former President Jimmy Carter, who is now in end-of-life care. He spent President's Day resting at home with his wife Rosalind and his family by his side. CBS News spoke with a former pastor of a church where Carter taught Sunday school. When Carter recruited Tony Loden, he said the two formed a special bond. In recent weeks, Loden has visited with the former president. He says Carter is at peace and is still thinking of others, offering his prayers to the country instead of asking others to pray for him. Well, after close to 70 years in business, the owners of Lane Bakery are selling. Later this year, the announcement comes on their biggest day of the year, Fat Tuesday. Only News 3 Now was there when now owner Chuck Lane shared the news with our Josh Spreider live in the 608 this morning. Since 1954, Lane's Bakery has played a role in the Madison community, providing homemade cake, donuts, cookies, and coffee. And, of course, the extra special days like weddings, birthdays, and anniversaries. For Chuck Lane, who took over the family business almost four decades ago, it's bittersweet. It's been a fun run, but I've been, you know, it's been 40 years, and it's time to slow down a little bit, change pace, and, you know, try something different. It's good and bad. You know, I feel sad about it, but in another way, I'm like, hey, you know, we, we've done a good job. I just would love to see somebody come in here and take over. It was a record fat Tuesday for Lane's. They doubled their orders of patch keys and king cakes over last year. There's more to come on News 3 Now at Noon. Lawsuits continue to mount for Twitter, and a plant-based infant formula is being recalled. Details coming up in the Money Watch Report. You're watching News 3 Now at Noon. Welcome to Oakmont Senior Community in Verona. Active seniors 55 plus will enjoy our new luxury apartments professionally managed by award-winning Attic Angel Community. Call Demery today for a tour and reserve your place at Oakmont. What can Sono Bello do for you? How about a new shape? Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. I just put this dress on that I haven't worn in over 10 years. New confidence. I can see a huge difference. Look at this. New you. 
I can wear a little black dress. I feel sexy. With Sanabello, you can permanently remove stubborn fat in just one visit. Don't wait. The results I've seen achieved are truly outstanding. Schedule your free, no obligation consultation with Sonobello, America's number one cosmetic surgery specialist, and find out how you can get $250 off. Sonobello uses TriSculpt Micro Laser Liposuction to remove your diet resistant fat cells permanently for incredible transformations in just one visit. I have one big regret. I didn't go sooner. Call 1 888 622 8360 or go to sonobello.com. Don't delay. The Brothers Main President's Day sale is happening now. Shop local and save with tremendous deals on Whirlpool, KitchenAid, Maytag, and Amana appliances. We have the area's largest selection and the lowest prices guaranteed. Feel like family. Brothers Main. Do you feel stuck living in a cold and drafty home? Well, there's a better solution than just turning up the heat. Because heating your home is by far the most expensive part of your energy bills. At USA Insulation, we fix cold homes. Most houses are built with builder's grade insulation. So when we fill your walls with our high efficiency foam, your house stays warm without turning up the heat, which saves you a lot of money. So call now and save up to 30% with the brand new energy credit. USA Insulation. DePaco Credit Union protects your well-being, supports you through life's many surprises. Because when our members love life, it makes a brighter community for all. DePaco can help you be well. Welcome to Oakmont Senior Community in Verona. Active seniors 55 plus will enjoy our new luxury apartments professionally managed by award-winning Attic Angel Community. Call Demery today for a tour and reserve your place at Oakmont. The Wall Street Journal reports that Twitter is facing at least nine lawsuits filed by landlords, vendors, and other outside companies claiming a combined total of $14 million in missed payments. Three of the lawsuits allege the company has not paid rent on offices it occupies. Tesla chief executive Elon Musk bought Twitter last October for $44 billion and has since implemented several cost-saving measures, including slashing its workforce and selling off hundreds of pieces of furniture. Twitter could not be reached for comment Monday. A warning now for parents of young children, Reckitt has voluntarily recalled roughly 145,000 cans of its Enfamil plant-based infant formula because of cross-contamination concerns. The company says there have been no reports of adverse reaction to the formula and that the recall is out of an abundance of caution after samples tested negative for contaminants. Consumers should check the batch number found on the bottom of the can against Reckitt's recall announcement online and discard or return the recalled items to the place of purchase for full refund. And good news for families who plan to fly with United in the future. The company is revamping its seating policy to allow parents traveling with children under 12 the ability to see and book adjacent seats at no additional charge. The change affects customers who buy basic and standard economy tickets and will start next month. Two weeks ago, President Biden called on Congress to ban airlines from charging preferred seating fees in order for families to sit together on a flight. That's your CBS News Money Watch report. For more, log on to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the CBS Broadcast Center, I'm Chanel Call. Let's check Wall Street at the noon hour. The Dow Industrials down 551 points. The NASDAQ off 242, the S&P 500 down 69. Next at noon, Pam has today's egg prices. Kelly has more on the upcoming alert days. And today on Live Before, it is primary election day. We'll have live team coverage from the polls and everything you need to know before you cast your ballot. That's coming up today at 4. After violence turned Waukesha's Christmas parade into tragedy, Judge Jennifer Doro ensured justice was served, maintaining order, protecting the rights of victims. Her grace under fire won praise nationally. Now Judge Jennifer Doro is ready to serve on the Supreme Court. Wife, mother, prosecutor. 
Judge Doro's life's work is keeping Wisconsin families safe. It's no surprise Judge Doro is law enforcement's choice. The tested judicial leader, Judge Jennifer Doro for Supreme Court. With reliable COVID-19 results in just 15 minutes, everyone is making room for Binax now in their medicine cabinet. Do we still need these pregnancy tests? <laughs> yeah, no. Out with the old, in with the number one COVID-19 self-test in the U.S. With the same technology doctors use to test for COVID-19. Binax now. Do you suffer with pain, numbness, and tingling in the hands or feet? Commonly diagnosed as peripheral neuropathy, are you taking drugs such as Lyrica or Gabapentin that have serious side effects and often do not relieve your symptoms? Your doctor has told you, you may just have to live with the pain. Peripheral neuropathy is a result of damage to the nerves, often causing burning, weakness, pain, numbness, tingling, and the most debilitating balance problems. Our facility uses multiple therapeutic methods to help give you relief from neuropathy symptoms with no injections and no drugs. You may start seeing relief after only a few sessions. To determine if your neuropathy symptoms can be relieved, we will do a consultation to evaluate the extent of your condition. Call us today to schedule your neuropathy consultation to find out if you're a candidate for our therapy. Call today. Tomorrow, a crazy winter storm sets us up for an alert day. I'm tracking the snow, sleet, and freezing rain and how that could impact your travel plans. And we'll break down the 2023 spring primary results. Join us tomorrow from 4.30 to 7. For 20% of its victims, the fallout from concussion can last months or years. It affects their work, their family life. It affects everything. News 3 Now, Charlotte Deleste shares her personal battle with the invisible injury Thursday at 10. The Farm Report is sponsored by Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Let's check in now with Pam Yankee from the Midwest Farm Report on this Tuesday. How are you? Not bad, not bad. I'll tell you what, though, this weather is really throwing a monkey wrench in a lot of people's plans. I was supposed to be up at the U.S. Championship Cheese Contest, which starts today up in Green Bay. I wanted to be there Wednesday and Thursday, and now I'm canceling out because I don't think I'd be able to get back on Thursday when everything got done. Same thing holds true tomorrow. We just found out that Wisconsin Congressman Mike Gallagher is going to have a Farm Bill listening session up in the Green Bay area. Two different locations tomorrow, but again, like I said, uh, given the weather, the forecast for northeast Wisconsin, even if it's the mecca of all things agriculture, I'm not sure how many people are going to turn out. I'll still be keeping up to date on that U.S. Championship Cheese Contest. You can, too. They're going to keep active on Facebook, and they'll be sending news to their website as well. As far as that listing session, well, that one's going to be a little trickier to monitor, but we'll do our best. Hey, so, you know, we talk about our weather and what's happening here. This morning, I talked to John Heinberg, market advisor with Total Farm Marketing out of West Bend. Can you believe it that our Argentina over the weekend saw frost. Now you say, okay, Pam, but what does that do to the crop? Well, imagine February here is like July, August for us down there. Uh, so their crop is well along and in fact is probably at one of the critical growth stages for pollination. So Heinberg says even if it was only a fairly small geographic area that experienced that frost, uh, it looks like it's going to definitely cut back the volume of crop that Argentina is going to bring to the marketplace. So that's some of the reason why we're seeing corn and soybeans new crop side a little bit stronger on the midday. We don't think that it necessarily did much in the Mato Grosso area, which is the major uh, producer for South America. But like I said, it is something to keep an eye on. And I, I bring this up primarily as a reason, an opportunity for producers here in the United States uh, to maybe think ahead about a put or a call or getting a floor under your risk later this year. Dairy markets back in action today in Chicago. Barrel cheese up three and a half at 158 and a quarter. 40 pound black cheese up eight at 196. Double A butter up a half at 238 a pound. So as long as my uh, four wheel beast can get me into the studios, you're probably going to be seeing me this week, uh, Mark. But I think getting to the studio is about as far as I'm going to try to <laughs> yeah. push it for a lot of the rest of this week. I think so too. Be careful out there. Yeah. Good to see. We'll see you tomorrow. All right.
All right. Well, if you own a dog, you may use a dog walker to help your four-legged friend get plenty of exercise. But in some cities, trying to find a walker these days isn't exactly a walk in the park. Part of that has to do with the pandemic. One survey found about one in five families adopted a pet in 2020 and early 2021. That's about 23 million households. And with that increased demand comes higher prices. The New York Times even reports one walker in New York makes six figures. Some say higher prices have more to do with inflation. Everything has gotten more expensive. We're paying $8 for eggs. Dog walkers also kind of have to be able to afford New York City. The American Pet Products Association reports Americans spend $9.5 billion a year on walkers, pet sitters, groomers, and insurance. A weather alert day. Expect rain, ice, snow. Parts of Wisconsin getting heavy snow. Kelly Slivka's out on the weather patio trying to sort it all out. Kelly. Yeah, it's just dependent on where you are going to be because our viewing area is going to go from ice in uh, southern Wisconsin to some really heavy snow north of Madison. Right now we're tracking the initial system that is producing some light snow. A lot of this is not reaching the ground in Iowa, but it is in south central Minnesota. And this will be mainly affecting areas from Madison areas to the north going into this evening and overnight tonight. Uh, not a whole lot of accumulation with that. So the alert day does go into effect tonight, mainly for their northern viewers, but all of us for tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night into Thursday, because it's going to be a prolonged system where eventually we're going to see some of this mixed with some sleet, freezing rain, some significant ice accumulation expected areas to the south, it looks like, going into tomorrow afternoon, and significant snow as you get up toward the Adels. There's going to be a sharp cutoff as this system really has a lot of energy with it, but it also has some colder air trying to uh, work against some of the warmer air that's coming in from the south. All right, temperatures right now are chilly, but uh, we've got the sun. You've got several hours yet to prepare for this storm because, as mentioned, it's going to be a prolonged system. And uh, if you are held up in your location, you might want to prepare for that. Make sure you have uh, everything taken care of before some of this starts to settle on in. Temperatures across Dane County, 20 uh, most locations in the mid 20s uh, this uh, this for uh, this noon hour. And we'll probably continue to rise now. The winds have really lightened up from where they were earlier. Now, we do have winter storm watches in effect for all of southern Wisconsin from tomorrow late in the morning into the afternoon afternoon and continuing right through Thursday. They already have blizzard warnings where they can expect one to two feet of snow and it's very flat out there in western Minnesota. Those winds can really blow that around. Obviously, it's going to be just creating complete standstill across the Twin Cities metro area, maybe even western Wisconsin because some of that heavier snow is expected to hit the Eau Claire area. So we have the Clipper system right now moving through the northern Rockies. That's going to meet up with the southern system and those two are going to clash right over the upper Mississippi Valley and that's why we do have the winter storm watch in effect uh, starting uh, tomorrow, uh, continuing right through Thursday. So uh, quiet for now. We are expecting some of this light snow to spread in, especially as we get toward the evening hours, say after five o'clock into the early evening hours for the Madison area. It looks like a lot of this is going to be staying to the north up toward the Adels, maybe getting a couple of inches of accumulation toward the Adels area, but the more significant snow is going to stay to the north upwards of an inch in the Madison area. Then we're watching Wednesday morning, say after 9 to 10 o'clock. That's when the system from the south starts to collide with some of that cold air. That warm air rides up and over that cold air. So we get that freezing rain, some sleet expected, some ice accumulation expected tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night. And you can see that rain line just kind of teetering along the Illinois border there. So that's where that significant icing is expected to be. Uh, this will continue right into uh, Thursday. In fact, some locations down in the south may be picking up a tenth to as much as a half of an inch of ice accumulation, causing problems on the roads, power lines, and the trees uh, going into a Thursday. Uh, otherwise, the heavy snow band will be just the north of Dane County. As you get up toward the Adels, maybe talking about a foot or more areas to the north, lesser amounts down the south, simply because some of that will be coming down as some sleet. And you can see that really heavy snow up there in parts of Minnesota, talking about one to two feet of snow extended into the Eau Claire area. So much of the upper Midwest is going to see just a uh, havoc of a winter storm, uh, the strongest one we've seen so far. So our first one weather forecast, the alert day goes into effect uh, late tonight. That'll continue into Wednesday and Thursday. A cold day Friday, so if any ice that we do get is not going to melt, uh, but we will hopefully get above freezing this weekend, and it looks pretty dry for the weekend as well. That is a mess. It's a mess. It's going to be a mess for a lot of folks. All right. Travel accordingly. Don't. <laughs> Pretty much. Right. All right, Kelly, thank you. There's more to come on News 3 Now at Noon. I'm next. Howard's celebrating Fat Tuesday in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. We're whipping up a New Orleans favorite just in time for Mardi Gras. Keep your shirt on.
I'll be back to show you in a minute. News 3 Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. You can't buy happiness, but you can buy an RV at Wisconsin RV World, and that's pretty darn close. Find your happiness during their RV Super Sale this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday only. Save over $30,000 on this new Heartland fifth wheel. Get this Keystone Springdale for as low as $185 a month, or this Cruiser Radiance for only $240 a month. Plus, get a one-year no-charge camping pass with every RV purchase. Wisconsin RV World. If it doesn't say Wisconsin, it's just another RV dealer. This year, say yes. I couldn't be more thrilled with my results. I'm over the moon happy. Look at that waist. Yes to confidence. I'm so happy I just put this dress on that I haven't worn in over 10 years. Yes to a new shape. These are my results. I am so happy. Yes to a new you. I'm Dr. Elena Vega. Imagine you could remove this much fat from multiple areas all at one time. Sono Bellows board certified surgeons use micro laser technology to safely target and remove your diet resistant fat cells for good. I have the flattest tummy that I've had in 25 years. I'm able to wear things that I never thought I would wear again. I can wear a little black dress. I feel sexy. Find out how you can get $250 off with our New Year exclusive offer. Call 1-800-993-0752 or go to sonobello.com. I'm Scott the Window Guy with AHD Wisconsin Windows. Our solid core. Cut! Uh, Sorry, everyone. I get a notification every time I get a positive review online. Makeup. Thanks, Dawn. We think our windows are pretty great, too. Take two. I'm Scott the Window Guy with AHT Wisconsin Windows. Our solid core, composite frame, triple pane windows are worth a positive review at scottthewindowguy.com. Cut. Somebody give me his phone. And Oh, the weather. What's the chance of rain tomorrow? Ooh, 80%. I make it rain. I make it rain. Speaking of making it rain, at Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison, we have an average 95% payout, which leads you to more chances of playing longer and more chances to win big. Play longer, win more, chances are you're gonna like it. Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison. Just in case you haven't looked at your calendar, today is Fat Tuesday. For many, that means we can eat anything and everything because all that changes tomorrow since it's Ash Wednesday. So what do you say we indulge ourselves with a Mardi Gras in New Orleans classic that is party perfect? If you guess we're making beignets, you're right. We start with a one pound loaf of frozen bread dough that we've thawed. To that, we knead in a bit of powdered sugar and roll it out on a cutting board. Now, we cut this into two inch squares and gently drop them in a deep skillet that has about an inch or so of shortening that we've heated up. Once they're browned on one side, we'll flip them over and in seconds, they're done. All that's left to do is shake on some powdered sugar, maybe put on a pot of chicory coffee, like they drink in New Orleans, and let the party begin. So don't dilly-dally, go online now as our recipe for Mardi Gras beignets is waiting for you. I'm Howard with Kelly in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a fun and festive way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Mm -hmm. All right, here's Kelly, one final look at the weather. Yeah, quiet for now, but we do have the first worn weather alert going into tonight, tomorrow, and Thursday. We're looking at a mix of sleet, freezing rain, and snow. It's going to be causing some icing problems and some heavy snow up to the north, but should be dry for the weekend. Uh, Gary and the crew will have an update at 4 o'clock.